Relic Entertainment just released the new entry in the Warhammer 40,000 strategy series, Dawn of War, Dawn of War 3. And given the scarcity of the real-time strategy genre nowadays, it's an opportunity to have a look how it stands in 2017. Indeed, here we are with Dawn of War 3 at last. Well, first thing first, let's talk about performance interface and controls. So let's head over to the options menu. Let's look at the graphics options. It's not too bad, just the basic set of different options that you can select. You can run a performance test, which is a welcome addition. The game has been reported to run quite well across the board. So any system meeting the minimum requirements should run the game quite smoothly, quite well. I must say that it's been a, a non-issue for a while that the game has quite a bit of input lag when playing com competitive 1v1 especially and um, I mean competitive online 1v1 and um, some skirmishes as well. So this is an issue that hopefully will be ironed out by the developers in coming patches. But at the moment, it is it is quite noticeable. Anyway, so heading over to the UI, we see a nice deal of different options that are actually quite welcome in an RTS, like uh, being able to customize outside of the screen when you're minimap and these kind of things. Uh, nice addition. However, there is no possibility to customize your key bindings. And I know it sounds silly for a, an RTS to be um, lacking this functionality in 2017, but we at Enlightening Gaming really do not understand how Relic Entertainment launches a game of this caliber without that functionality in the, this day and age. So as it is a, indeed a feature that doesn't require an immense amount of development energy. We hope that it gets patched in the game soon enough, because otherwise the game is looking interesting, as you will see. So speaking of which, let's just um, just just jump into a quick um, game against the AI, something like this. Um, so you can see, um, as you can expect, uh, the game plays like pretty much any modern RTS, you will find the usual competitive real-time strategy environment with symmetric two-dimensional maps uh, with 3D graphics in order to you know account for high ground mechanics or flying units, this sort of thing. Um, uh, the economy system you will see is very interesting because it's pretty much tied to um, pretty much tied to uh, map control instead of gathering resources and this sort of thing. Come so here's my worker. Box. So what I can do with my worker is of course build something Initiate like a barracks to produce more military units. So let's make a worker with this. And you can see that across the map you find this control points that you can capture Service and they deployed. give you more resource income that meaning more resource income from your base resource income as you can see my resources down here are growing um, so these are the basic two resources that you know are to uh, mineral gas and starcraft and this sort of thing um, so let me show you if i move my unit to this control point you will see i can capture it so obviously this this third um, resource that, as you will see, will make things very, very interesting. Um, it's precisely what allows me to play my elites. And this is pretty much what sets this RTS apart from uh, all the titles in the genre. Um, so let's uh, make some, uh, what are these called? Assault Marine Squads. Um, it's a pretty interesting unit. So I can show you some basic um, units in the game playing as the Space Marines. So as you can see, I can upgrade, and that little upgrade when it's done, it will increase my um, requisition 
income for it. Um, so that is pretty much the basic of the game. Other than that, you can just expect the usual military RTS uh, gameplay mechanics. So I have my units, I can control them. They, of course, form um, a single entity. Uh, these five soldiers are in a single entity. And most units have some sort of uh, activated ability, some sort of skill that um, you can activate. So, for example, these have this jump and they land and they create a nice area of effect yes, disrupting the enemy and so um, So, as you can see, my elite points are growing as time goes on, and, oh well, I have a little skirmish going on over here. So let's just crash them. And at the moment I'm just waiting until my elite points get to two, so I just need to wait 80 seconds. Um, but then I can show you how I can spend those elite points to deploy um, my elite units, my special hero unit. Um, and from there it will pretty much be uh, the same until the end of the game, of course. The big units are very powerful and uh, you'll find uh, huge armies fighting each other and so... Also, of course, uh, this guy, AI guy, is absolutely destroying me. But that's okay, because we'll deploy our elite in just a few seconds. So, yes, it has the basic functionality of any RTS. There's a lot of micro in the battles, you can see. Um, I could tactical jump on this marines, I could deploy my standard. So there's a lot of micro possibility in the game. Um, but of course, the really interesting addition to the uh, Arceus formula is this elite system. I have, you can see I have these three heroes and this extra ability. As you can read from the screen, this deploys a big laser that comes from the sky and deals a lot of damage and so on. But at the moment, my first two elite points will be spent on this special unit that is special in the sense that can be deployed anywhere where I have vision. So if I want to deploy it here, they will just land there. Otherwise, you would need to use some uh, control point or building. So here they are. They're just like a usual unit, but it has some special abilities or health, shields, or not. So, yes, that's uh, pretty much the basics of uh, the gameplay of Total War 3. Um, as I say, this could be a very, very interesting um, formula indeed if uh, you know, elites are balanced properly, because it's essentially, you could think of it as a layer of uh, resource based mobile on top of a uh, full-fledged RTS, so indeed quite interesting. Um, so let's just go out of this game for now. And let's talk about um, solo competitive play. As someone who would like to get into this game competitively, and anyone who is interested, might uh, need to find the basic um, the basic um, features. So first of all, let's look at the profile in this game. So this is this is my profile, right? If I'm uh, willing to take uh, this game seriously, if I want to improve at this game and so on, as uh, we uh, like to promote here in Adelaide Gaming, I would like to see my stats. At the moment, I have very, very basic, very simple stats. I can just see my total wins and losses. So obviously you have the wins and you have the ratio, and the win ratio. Um, so it's uh, extremely basic, obviously it has no information about how, how good I am as a player, because I mean, well I guess if you have a 0% winning ratio then that means that you're a pretty bad player with a high count of, of games played, but other than that that's obviously um, no useful at all uh, information. Now, it's been reported by the developers that a ranked system is in the works, so we shall keep an eye on this game and uh, update with a future video so we can't really comment on it at the moment because you can see that when I go to multiplayer I can only do 
quick match. I can only just search for a random opponent, then I think there's some sort of hidden LMR system, but other than that, I can do much with it when it comes to ranked play. So, in that sense, it's um, very, very nice that there's already um, the possibility to look at your match history and see all these statistics. I really like this idea, of course, that you can look at your match history and actually check you know, the interaction at a, at a glance this way. I mean, it's, it's a fantastic idea. My issue, though, is that all this data is pretty much pointless. I mean, it has no real information about my performance in the game. I mean, it tells me roughly how the game went, so I guess it's somehow good to identify a single game, but it's not really helping uh, me uh, identify um, flaws or uh, points to improve. I mean, it's really not helping any dedicated player uh, improve. So would like to see this uh, just improved. I mean, it's a very good feature that it's already implemented in the game. In fact, there's the, this player profile with the information that you can check about yourself. I really like that it has a menu like this, but it's missing the relevant information, the relevant stats. And obviously, second thing, uh, and that wraps up the solo competitive uh, side of things, is that there is a tab that is called Learn. This is fantastic. This is a really nice addition. Uh, training is basically the tutorials, which are quite nice. They introduce the basic mechanics. Codex is pretty much like a uh, manual. Um, not very nice, but at least it contains all the basic information. It's missing quite a bit of information as well, but the basic information is there. So I would like to see this fleshed out. And of course, some basic, basic, basic and very, very bare bones uh, replay functionality, which is, of course, uh, something essential uh, as a learning tool. I would say it's the, the most basic learning tool in our RTS, really. So at least the, the basics of the game, really, are implemented. So let, let us just briefly mention uh, team competitive play and coaching. There's not much to say. I mean, team competitive play is in the same state as uh, single uh, solo competitive play because there's no ranked system, so at the moment you're just being paired with other players, which is really nice. I mean, they are implemented in a, a very good way. I mean, uh, developers claim that this game is, to, is meant to be played 3v3, 2v2, and that's where it really shines. That's fine. The games work really well, these modes, uh, but there's no competitive ladder in those, as there isn't for 1v1. So we, we cannot comment too much on that, so unfortunately there's no spectator mode either, which is something that might hurt the potential um, eSport side of the game, uh, but again, something that can be implemented without too much development energy. Alright, so the game overall, and here's our verdict, the game overall has the basics to be very good. So our verdict is that this is a good game. This is a game that has all the ingredients to be an RTS for the modern era. I mean, it's uh, an updated version of RTS with all this elite system that you can um, uh, summon in each battle. And it pretty much feels like a, a simple economic MOBA on top an already fleshed out uh, RTS. So indeed very complex. It has a lot of layers of uh, strategy and um, I see a lot of potential for this game as a competitive eSport indeed. So we just hope that the UI is polished, of course, custom key bindings are implemented. I mean, that is uh, kind of a given yeah, nowadays for RTS. Um, then uh, we really hope that the overall UI is polished. I mean, when it polish overall, you can see, I mean, resolution is not great and the uh, quite a few features missing, etc. So, just overall polish and that the competitive rank ladder is implemented well. Provided that's the case, this game is really good. It's looking pretty, really good. We really like it, adding Lightning Gaming. And as we said, uh, we'll keep an eye on it because the uh, updates um, for this game might make it excellent. It might change our verdict from good to excellent if indeed the future updates put it right there. 
Anyway, so thanks for watching, and as usual, may your gaming be enlightened. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and leave a comment down below suggesting any further topics or games that you would like to see covered in the future. Also, if you're interested in knowing more about the philosophy behind online gaming, the basis for our critique, and how we do analysis of games, make sure to follow these links that take you to the presentation videos of the channel. Thank you very much, and as always, may your gaming be enlightened.